the bridge for math with another video today on functions. In particular, we're going to learn something called a composition of functions. So let's look at the notation, because math is a language. And notice you see f, and it looks like some of you might be tempted to call it the fog. And sometimes people jokingly refer to this as finding the fog of x. But this O or is actually the symbol for composition, not multiplication. Don't go there. It's composition. So we're going to show you what composition means in this video. What it means is one of these functions, particularly the one on the left side, quote, eats the other function. What's another way? Say what? I don't blame you. Like, what do you mean a function eats another function? Well, what it really means is that the function on the right side of the composition symbol, the circle, becomes the input. So the function on the left, f, will eat up, look at the o like a mouth, eat up g of x, so g of x becomes the input to the function f. So let's look at an example so you can visually see it. Suppose we have two functions, one is a simple linear function, the other is kind of a little trickier with a square root and a fraction. We're doing the fog again. F composed with G. Function F composed with function G. We know the function on the right side of the circle becomes the input. But let's look at this. What is function F? If you were to look at function F, what defines function F? Function F takes whatever input, remember, in the parentheses, that's just an input. Here you see an X, but it's just an input. It takes what you put in, it triples it, and adds 7. So if you had f of g of x, it's literally going to triple g of x and add 7. Well, do you know what g of x is? Sure, they give you both functions. It's 5 thirds square root x. So you plug in, you substitute for g of x, you put 5 thirds square root of x. Now to simplify it, like all math questions usually want you to do, take the 3 and multiply it, so it cancels out the 3 here. The final answer, 5 square root of x plus 7, it's right here. Now, typically on more advanced algebra tests, composition really is correlated or shows up with inverse questions, inverse functions. So I'm not going to do in this video what inverse functions are, but I'll give you a little taste or an intro on how you can look at them. So let's look at this question. Show by taking the compositions that the following functions are inverses of each other. So two different functions, they still have the same letters, f and g, just to keep it simple. But this time the function f is a cube root. You see the three near the radical sign? A cube root function. g of x is x cubed minus 4. It's an exponential function. x cubed minus 4. Um, we take, when they say Compositions plural, that means you need to take the fog and the goth. So order counts. It's really important that you, who is eating which function. So if we look at the one on the left, the fog, F is in control. And it's eating up G of X, your input. So let's look at it. When you, see, when you think of function F in control, what is function F? Do you see that radical sign? You think of seeing the radical sign. So do you see the radical sign here? A cube root. Do you see the plus 4 that was given to you in the function f? There's the plus 4. But now, instead of the x, what is there? Your input, g of x. Perfect. Now what is g of x? It's x cubed minus 4. So we plugged in, right, you see a g of x, x cubed minus 4, you replace it. Well, what's minus 4 plus 4? 0. So what's the cube root of x cubed? It's simply x. Now, isn't that interesting? Literally, what we put in to these two functions being composed is what came out. That is a characteristic of inverse functions. Inverse functions kind of cancel each other out. So let's see if, if you understand what I'm talking about right now. I'll give you a little extra bonus time for this video. If I went up to you and said, which one of these functions would you like to bank with? I hope you'd be going, Dr. B, I'd bank with bank of G. Because I put in $10, it cubes it, and it charges me a $4 fee. 
So I end up getting, for $4, I end up getting $996. I like that kind of investment. Well, if you went to the bank of F and you put in $10, 10 plus 4 is 14. What's the cube root of 14? Yeah, get your calculator out real quick. But I can tell you it's something pretty small. So it's less than $3. So anytime you put in more and you get out less, that's not good. So these two functions are very different. But do you see how one cube roots it and the other cubes it? Do they seem like opposing forces? They are. They're inverse functions. So when you put them together through composition, they basically crush each other down so you end up with what you put in is what you get out. That's really the concept of inverse functions. But let's continue. This question really was, do you understand what composition of functions means? It's another thing like the algebra of functions. It's something you can do with functions. You can't do composition of numbers. You can't put numbers inside numbers. But you can put functions inside functions to create a new function. So you remember I said order counts. Fog, we just did. Let's see what happens when we take the Goth, or G composed with F. Who's in charge? The one on the left. So function G is in charge. What do you think of when you think of function G? You think of something cubed subtract 4. So, do you see I put parentheses here? That's the something cubed subtract 4. So, the structure of G is there when you do the composition. Well, what's my input? It's f of x, so it's going to be f of x cubed, and we know what f of x is. f of x is the cube root of x plus 4. So we substitute that in for f of x, the cube root of x plus 4. We cube it, then we subtract 4. Now here's something nice. If you remember your review on radicals, what happens when you cube a cube root? They cancel each other out, and you're left with x plus 4, the radical goes away, the minus 4, the minus 4 is still there. 4 minus 4 is 0. You're left with x. Whoa, now that's trippy. Is that supposed to happen each time that the f, the fog, and the goth will give you the same result? The answer is no. Most of the time, it doesn't happen that way. Most of the time, order really makes a difference, whether it's fog versus goth. They'll give you different functions. However, when you're dealing with functions that are inverses, this will happen every time, that what you put in the x, you'll get out an x. This happens that the fog is equal to the goth, which gives you x. They are inverses of each other. Challenging question, but I think I've given you the strength to take on compositions. Thank you for watching The Bridge for Math. Come see some more videos and tell your friends.